Hello, this is Exodus 13, the consecration of the firstborn. The Lord said to Moses, consecrate to me every firstborn male. So consecrate is to set apart for God, God's, God's purposes. The first offspring, the first child of every womb, among the Israelites belongs to me, whether human or animal. Then Moses said to the people, Commemorate this day, the day you came out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery, because the Lord brought you out of it with a mighty hand. Remember, uh, the Lord is God the Creator. He said in the past he was known as El, E L, Shaddai, which is God Almighty. But after Jacob and his descendants lived in Egypt and they had to leave and go back to this land where modern day Israel is now. That then, you know, like God is saying, now, you know, we're leaving Egypt. I did not fully make myself known to you when it was Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Now I am to you, the Lord, your God, or the Lord called the Lord our God. So because the Lord brought you out of it with a mighty hand, and in order to bring them out, he had to hit, you know, attack, punish Egypt with all these plagues. Eat nothing containing yeast. Today in the month of Aviv, you are leaving. When the Lord brings you into the land, of the Canaanites, Hittites, Amorites, Hivites, and Jebusites, the land he swore to your ancestors to give you, a land flowing with milk and, and honey. You are to observe this ceremony in this month. And if you look at an older video, they have this festival where they eat bread with no yeast in it. And it's for seven days. And uh, it says, Nor shall any yeast be seen anywhere within your borders. On that day, tell your son or your sons, I do this, or we the Israelites do this because of what the Lord did for me, did for us when I came out of Egypt. This observance will be for you like a sign on your hand oh, and a reminder on your forehead. You know, in um, later on, we'll, we might read Deuteronomy and they talk about a sign on your hand and a reminder on your forehead. So it, it's also because uh, Jewish people do this thing where they uh, put something on their head and there's like, they use something called uh, tefillah, tefillah, I think. Let's see, tefillin. They wrap something on their left arm, and then they wrap something on their head, and there's something on their forehead. So they do that, probably because it's to remember, to eat unleavened bread in the month of Aviv, the first month, first month. 
This observance, eating unleavened bread, that this law of the Lord is to be on your lip, lips. For the Lord brought you out of Egypt with his mighty hand. You must keep this ordinance at the appointed time, year after year. But if you think about it, a sign on your hand and a reminder on your forehead, it's just, don't forget, you know, that's, that's all it's saying. After the Lord brings you into the land of the Canaanites and gives it to you as he promised on oath to you and your ancestors, you are to give over to the Lord the first offspring of every womb. All the firstborn males of your livestock belong to the Lord. Redeem with a lamb every firstborn donkey. But if you do not, if you do not redeem it, break its neck. Redeem every firstborn among your sons. In days to come, when your son asks you, What does this mean? Say to him, With a mighty hand, the Lord brought us out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery, when Pharaoh stubbornly, stubbornly refused to let us go. The Lord killed the firstborn of both people and animals in Egypt. This is why sacrifice to the Lord, the first male offspring of every womb, and redeem each of my firstborn sons. And it will be like a sign on your hand and a symbol on your forehead that the Lord brought us out of Egypt with his mighty hand. All right, let's take a look at this. This is called Consecration of the Firstborn. So when they get to the land, they're leaving Egypt, and they're going to where modern-day modern day Israel is right now. So when they get there, God is telling them, you have to give me, give me as a sacrifice the firstborn offspring of all your animals. But there are two things that have to be redeemed. The lamb and your firstborn son. So they won't be sacrificed like the, um, I guess the lamb, we'll have to see. The lamb, how can you sacrifice your firstborn son? That's ridiculous. So. The lamb is not sacrificed. You have to substitute it with a firstborn donkey. And you substitute, I don't know what you substitute for your firstborn son. Crossing the sea. The next passage is called Crossing the Sea. When Pharaoh let the people go, God did not lead them on the road through the Philistine country, though that was shorter. For God said, if they faced war, if they faced war, they might change their minds and return to Egypt. 
So God led the people around by the desert road toward the Red Sea. The Israelites went up out of Egypt ready for battle. Moses remembered. He brought the bones of Joseph with him because Joseph had made the Israelites swear an oath. He had said, God will surely come to your aid and then you must carry my bones up with you from this place. After leaving Sukkoth, they camped at Etham on the edge of the desert. By day, the Lord went ahead of them in a pillar of cloud to guide them on their, on their way and by night, a pillar of fire to give them light so that they could travel by day or night. Neither the pillar of cloud by day nor the pillar of fire by night left its place in front of the people. Let's go on to Exodus 14. Then the Lord said to Moses, Tell the Israelites to turn back and encamp near Pi Ha'iroth between Migdal and the sea. Camp by the sea direct, directly apo, uh, opposite Baal Zephron. Zephon, Baal Zephon. Pharaoh will think the Israelites are wandering around the land in confusion, hemmed in by the desert, and I will harden Pharaoh's heart, and he will pursue you, or them, it says them here, but I will gain glory for myself through Pharaoh and all of his army. I will gain glory for myself through God is going to attack them again attacking them and the Egyptians will know that I am the Lord so the Israelites did this so when the king of Egypt was told that the people had fled Pharaoh and his officials changed their minds about them and said what have we done? We have let the Israelites go and have lost their services. So he had his chariot made ready and took his army with him. He took 600 of the best chari chariots along with all the other chariots of Egypt. 600 plus chariots with officers over all of them. The Lord, that's God, hardened the heart of Pharaoh, king of Egypt, so that he pursued the Israelites who were marching out boldly. So this was like a little battle. I did not know that. The Egyptians, all Pharaoh's horses, and chariots, horsemen, and troops pursued the Israelites and overtook them as they camped by the sea near Pi Ha'iroth, opposite Baal Zephon. As Pharaoh approached, the Israelites, Israelites looked up, and there were the Egyptians marching after them. So they had no idea that Pharaoh had that many chariots and soldiers. They were terrified and cried out to the Lord. They said to Moses, was it because there were no graves in Egypt that you brought us out to the desert to die? What have you done to us by bringing us out of Egypt? 
Didn't we say to you, then leave us alone, let us serve the Egyptians? It would have been better for us to serve the Egyptians than to die in the desert. Remember, there, it says right here in verse, it was right here, verse 8, the Israelites were marching out boldly. So when there's marching, of course, they're sold, soldiers, they're get weapons. So they're afraid they're all going to be slaughtered in the desert. Moses answered the people. You have to watch a movie called uh, Gods and Kings, starring Christian Bale as Moses. It's a cool movie, man. You know, he, Moses, he was trained as a general. You, know, you can see him wearing a helmet. There's like a little bird right there. He has a sword, a really cool sword. Moses answered the people, Do not be afraid. Stand firm, and you will see the deliverance the Lord will bring you today. The Egyptians you see today, you will never see again. The Lord will fight for you. You need only, only to be still. Then the Lord said to Moses, God is saying to Moses, Why are you crying out to me? Tell the Israelites to move on. Raise your staff and stretch out your hand over the sea to divide the water so that the Israelites can go through the sea on dry ground. I will harden the hearts of the Egyptians so that they will go in after them. And I will gain glory through Pharaoh, through attacking them, and all his army through his chariots and his horsemen. The Egyptians will know that I am the Lord when I gain glory through attacking Pharaoh, his chariots, and his horsemen, then the angel of God, he's different from the angel of the Lord, who had been traveling in front of Israel's army, withdrew and went, went behind Israel's army. See, Israel's army so remember, earlier, you have to watch an earlier video. They talked about all of Jacob's sons and Jacob's sons' sons. And uh, they called them, called them divisions of an army. So the pillar of cloud, who is the angel of God, also moved. No, wait a minute. The, that might be the angel of the Lord. Did you ever think of that? If you have watched like the cartoon movie, The Prince of Egypt, or if you've seen both, the cartoon movie and Gods and Kings, perhaps, let's see, is it the pillar of fire? There's two, two pillars so that they could travel day or night. But it says here in verse 19, so cool. The pillar of cloud also moved from in front and stood behind them. So there's two pillars. Or, hmm, the pillar of cloud could cloud could turn into a pillar of fire but you know the way when I when I've read the, uh, the Holy Bible a lot 
one thing doesn't really turn into the other thing. So, I'm not sure, but the angel of God, he could have changed into the pillar of fire. And we know, if you've watched my earlier videos, there's this dude called the angel of the Lord. So he could be the pillar of cloud. And then, so the angel of God who could be a pillar of fire, right? And the angel of the Lord who could be the pillar of cloud. They were... They positioned, positioned themselves between the two armies. Through the, night, through the night, the cloud brought darkness to the one side and light to the other side. So neither went near the other all night, all the night long. Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and all that night, the Lord, Lord, that's God, drove the sea back with a strong east wind and turned it into dry land. The waters were divided, and the Israelites went through the sea on dry ground with a wall of water on their right and on their left. The Egyptians pursued them, pursued them, and all Pharaoh's horses and chariots and horsemen followed them into the sea. During the last watch of the night, the Lord looked down from the pillar of fire and the cloud at the Egyptian army and threw it into confusion. He jammed the wheels of their chariots so that they had difficulty driving and the Egyptians said let's get away from the Israelites the Lord is fighting for them against Egypt then the Lord said to Moses stretch out your hand over the sea so that the waters may flow back over the Egyptians and their chariots and horsemen Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and at daybreak, that's morning, the sea went back to its place. The Egyptians were fleeing toward it, and the Lord swept them into the sea. The water flowed back and covered the chariots and horsemen. The entire army of Pharaoh that had followed the Israelites into the sea, not one of them survived. So this is what I think happened. It was a clever military maneuver. So God, he must be like a general of generals. You heard that Jesus is called the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. So he has strategies or strategies he said, I want you to camp by the sea. And then Pharaoh will think you're wandering and you're confused. So he'll come to attack you. So Pharaoh came to attack them. And Israel, the Israelites' army, when they saw them coming, then they mar marched forward to meet Pharaoh. And then they might have acted scared. There's so many of them, so let us run, we're scared. And uh, while they were running, these two pillars appeared and started to cause the Egyptians to, uh, let's look right here, confuse them. And then their, the wheels of their chariots jammed somehow.
They didn't, the wheels of their chariot, chariots didn't work very well. And then Moses, there's a sea there. Remember, he told him to camp by the sea. He just, God and Moses, Moses, God told Moses to stretch out your hand and the entire sea just split apart like that. And then there was dry land. So the Israelites are acting scared. Ah, uh, let's run through there, you know, through that dry land. So you have to imagine there's a sea and then it just, Let's open this way, right? And then they're baiting the Egyptians to run through. And they're running through. Ah, we're scared, you know. And then they get to this side of the sea, this is dry land, right? the seas that you're in here. So the those two pillars just confused Pharaoh. It's it made the made their wheels not work, so you know, they slow them down as they ch chase the scared Israelites. Ah, scared of them. You know, Pharaoh's like chasing them with his army. And, and then, you know, the wall, the entire sea is somehow being held up in, in, the, in the air. You know, it's like the sea's like this and it splits and there's the water. It's like, <laughs> So what, when they when the Israelites ah I was scared they got to this side dry land, then God told Moses okay make the water fall on them boom you know they drowned all of them drowned them man loop 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 so I think we left off here on, at verse twenty nine. The Israelites went through the sea on, on dry ground with a wall of water on the right and the left. Uh, if, I, if I already read it, let's just read it again. That day, the Lord saved Israel from the Egyptians. And Israel saw the Egyptians lying dead on the shore. And when the Israelites saw the mighty hand of the Lord displayed against the Egyptians, the people, feared the Lord and put their trust in him and in Moses, his servant. Feared the Lord as they were in awe of him. They saw that, they saw what he could do. So they, they trust God. Thank you for listening. I hope that was educational. Remember, put God first. You know, take your places. Thank you.